Hello, and welcome to Songwriters Spotlight, the Western Mass Songwriters Collaborative Series. I'm Dr. Dan, your host of the show, where we feature Western Mass songwriters who perform their original songs and talk about the art of songwriting. Stay tuned to explore more about music and the tunesmithing that creates it. On this show, we'll feature Claire Dacey, a folk singer-songwriter, instrumentalist, naturalist ecologist, visual artist, teacher, and mom. Please stay tuned for great original music and conversation about songwriting with Claire Dacey. Okay, sounds good. <laughs> so this first song is called I Remember, and um, it it comes from a, an experience that I had in the last year where I sat in the woods in the same place every day for a year, um, and there's a lot more to that that I won't get into, but at the end of that year, I really wanted to write a thank you song to the forest, this beautiful place that had kind of held me day after day for a year. And I really had no idea what that would be like, um, what that song should be like. And I went out to my site and I just um, kind of asked the forest, I said, I want to write a thank you song. I don't know what it should be. And I'm open to suggestions. <laughs> and, uh, and this song just, um, it just came right through was just it was there and I was like whoa that's different <laughs> it's not anything that I would have come up with but I love it um I remember
So this next song is called Push the Dream, and it is a song about the first women to cross Antarctica on foot. And um, I wrote this song. It was partly inspired by uh, Bill Stain's, not Bill Stain's, um, Stan Rogers' song, Northwest Passage. And I've always loved singing that song, and I love the adventure in that song, this sort of this epic scope of that song. And I wanted to write a song that had that kind of epic scope and adventure. And I wanted it to be about women. So I did some research and I found out about these two women, um, Leave Arneson and Anne Bancroft, who crossed Antarctica back in, I think it was 2001. And <clears throat> this is a really different than most of my songs in that I actually did lots of research and I read things that they had written and I read articles and I watched videos of them talking and I researched Antarctica and this song is what came out of it about their um, their trip which was definitely epic um, and there's a vocabulary word in here that I always like to define since it's unfamiliar for most people it's sastruga which is a Russian derived word for these waves that form in the ice um, over time as wind just blows over the ice and it creates these waves and as they were skiing across the continent they had to navigate these big waves in the ice which was really a huge challenge so sestruga is what that is <coughs> disappears and when it slips away the endless night is near and we've still 500 miles to go of ice and wind and frozen tears and bitter driven snow the Sastruga rank on rank they rise to block our
this song is like it's a, like a prayer um and i think that's probably the best thing that i can say about it it's very personal um to me and yeah also i i use the word lord in this song and i know that's sort of like can be controversial for people and and for me it it means just sort of the universe spirit and for some people it might mean god and for some people it might just really mean nothing but <laughs> anyway make my life a song called um babe you're still on my mind which is i don't i don't write a lot of love songs but i felt like i should shake it up a little bit by putting one of those in um and this is um i think of this as like my oldest living song <laughs> so i certainly wrote songs before this but none of them that have, are still in circulation <clears throat> so this is a an oldie but hopefully a goodie
This song is called This Is The Melody, and I wrote it um, back in 2005 when I was spending the summer on a, a, a horse ranch that um, is also a healing refuge for women. And I was doing a work study there, and I was staying in this little yurt in the desert, and um, I had a day where I basically just hung out at the yurt and sat and watch the day go by uh, on the desert. And it was very beautiful. And this was one of those songs that just kind of arrived like whole, just from witnessing the day. So it's called This Is The Melody.
Well, Claire, thanks so much for being here today, and your performance was wonderful, just wonderful at, at a lot of levels. <laughs> thank, thank you. Thank you for that. You're welcome. Yeah, yeah. So um, your, your music is uh, clearly an expression of, of your interests and your passions, and I notice a big theme is nature. Um, how, how did you come to be so interested in nature? Wow. Um, I, I've been interested in nature since I was a little kid. Yeah. And I think, I think there's just some, like, it's like just in me on some level. But I had a lot of good nature experiences as a kid that, and it's just, you know, if you're a curious person, nature is like the perfect place to go because you could never answer all your questions. You could never be bored. So that was part of my initial draw to nature, I think. But um, I just feel so much when I'm in nature, when I'm in the forest, when I'm in the mountains, wherever I am. Um, and, you know, it's not something that there's a lot of songs about. I feel like there's lots of love songs and there's lots of, you know, I don't know fill in the blank but there aren't a lot of nature songs um and it's there's so much that's like welling up in me when i'm in a natural setting and it's something that you can't just casually kind of blab about like hey bill how's it going yeah i had this transcendent experience in nature this morning how are you doing you know i don't know it just needs yeah. it needs music it needs poetry it needs something more to express it so it's really it's like the the core that my life is built around so it makes sense that it's also the core of my songwriting in a lot of ways so that's a passion side of it. you've also studied formally studied you know, nature yes how does that does that come into your music um it does actually sometimes um i have a few songs with some real nerdy bits in them <laughs> that come from years of nature science study ecology and geology and um i think i think where it comes in is that it's not really direct it's not like i my scientific understanding is like right there in the song but i i think that it gives me such a framework for understanding what I'm seeing and experiencing when I'm in nature and I think it helps me see more uh, than I otherwise would um, and I've looked at nature from so many different angles and through so many different lenses that it's just very it's a very facile kind of topic for me and I can um, I can make a story out of something I think probably more easily because of all this studying even though you know I'm usually coming at it from a more sort of emotional angle when I'm writing a song but it's it's in there <laughs> I'm sure it's mm -hmm. in there <laughs> and I, I have the sense you can correct me if I'm wrong but a lot of your nature experiences involve sitting in one place and taking it in is that accurate um that's not totally accurate that's like this most recent phase of my kind of connecting with nature has been centered around sitting in one place and taking it in and uh, and in some ways that was kind of a new thing for me um there's always some element of that um but there's also just like a lot of you know backpacking through the mountains and you know, long distance hikes and canoe trips and um, a lot of scientific field work, which sometimes involves sitting in the same place, but a lot of times involves a lot of like bushwhacking through the woods from one site to another, taking data and sort of trying to take in the nature at the same time as you're, you know, filling out your data sheet. You're writing songs and filling out data sheets. Well, no, uh, not usually. <laughs> but some of the songs that were inspired by places that I've mm -hmm. been when I was, you know, doing some sort of scientific work. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, two of your songs, let's see. Um, this is a melody, and, and I remember 
basically involved sitting and and looking. Which, That's true. Which I found you know, quite intriguing. And you know, like you say, a lot of people that let's get from here to there, or let's paddle to the mouth of the river and back real quick and that kind of thing and and they miss out but um that's a interesting approach that you have at least with these these songs yeah and i mean i can't say enough good things about staying in one spot and Mm -hmm. returning to the same spot Mm -hmm. repeatedly as a way to see and experience much more than you do when you're kind of you know going through the tunnel of green like i'm getting somewhere i'm going somewhere you know you just the the wildlife heard you coming like 20 miles away and they're gone you know there's just a lot that you won't see that way oh and you made friends with a deer in, at arcadia right oh yeah we yeah. got we were tight <laughs> <laughs> she got used to being around you having you there so um, yeah so that's that's a, an additional benefit definitely yeah. um so <clears throat> so do you have a purpose in, in writing and singing about nature? Is that, is, uh, apart from just feeling a need? I mean, I think, I, I think and my other artists can disagree with me. As an artist, usually when I'm making art, whether it's a song or a painting or what have you, like I'm feeling a need in myself to express myself. And then somebody's like, well, why are you doing that? And you got to kind of go back and say, why am I doing that? and and then come up with sort of a statement. I'm sure there are artists who go the other way around. They have a purpose, and then they go out and fulfill it. But for me, it's it's just like an urge to make something. And then I can look back and make a story about why I needed to make that thing or what purpose it might serve in the world. And I, and I think that has some value. But it's definitely not like I don't start from that and mm-hmm. say, like, oh, here's what I'm trying to do in the world, and I will now make these things um that being said what is my purpose um in writing songs about nature um you know i think in some ways it's just like in in our culture and certainly in the popular culture it's not like cool you know you don't hear like cool like pop rock songs about nature it's just and it's not it's not really part of our culture to connect with nature it's not how we roll (laughs) Mm -hmm. and and i think that's also having we're we're seeing the effects of that in all of these um environmental crises that we're having the fact that we don't really have a way um culturally that we engage with nature or that we value nature and um so I love to write songs about it because it's so rich and I'd love to um, draw more people into connection with nature and I'd love for the people who already feel connected to feel like, you know, music can be so supportive. You can, you feel like you're not just like alone with your kooky self, you know, you hear somebody sing a song and you're like, yeah, Mm. I get that. I feel that. I felt that. And and it matters to me. And now I'm hearing this song and I know how much it matters to me. Um, So from that, from that angle, you know, I think the purpose is to just give voice to that love and connection and hope that it helps other people make that connection and feel empowered with whatever connection they feel. Yeah. What, what about other songwriters? What do you suggest you know, if songwriters aspire to sort of channel emotions related to nature or relationships or, you know, self-image or whatever, they they're feel the urge that you described to uh, express? What, what do you suggest that they do? well i think it's i think people make songs in really different ways so it's it's um i know so many different songwriters and their processes often really surprise me how differently they come at the process of making a song um i mean one of my foundational suggestions is to make sure that you actually are have time in your world that you could be creative um you have to honor that in some way uh, make space for that you're not going to write a song if you don't make any time to write a song and 
it doesn't necessarily have to mean like from three to four, I'm going to sit down, I'm going to write this song, but it could be from three to four, I go for a walk in the woods or I, you know, do something that feeds my soul. And I think creativity really, if it's going to be genuine and come from the heart, like your heart has to be like awake and alive. And if there's no space for that, in your life, then it's going to be much harder to write a song. And I know a lot of people who think like, oh, I, I can't write a song. I just, it's just, I can't do it. And um, I felt that way at one time in my life. I'd try to write a song and it'd be just so hackneyed and just like dumb. And <laughs> I'd be like, oh, this is terrible. And I just hadn't opened that space yet for myself. And, and for me, what opened it was like a, a long trip on the Appalachian Trail, just like hiking day after day with all this space and time to just feel and be and be in nature. And the song just, my first song that I ever wrote just kind of like bubbled out of that. And uh, and it was like, oh, like maybe I could write a song. Mm. <laughs> um, so I guess that's my my biggest suggestion. And then there's lots of, you know, techniques or sort of going about it or approaches. And that's pretty, I think, more individual. Mm -hmm. You know, that's absolutely right um, about the different approaches. Um, let's see. And then you, your Push the Dream song was, was very interesting. Um, and that was a research song. Yeah. This yeah. is my only research song <laughs> so <laughs> far. Okay. <laughs> it and, was really fun to write, though. Yeah. And it was it was the the fact that it was women you know taking on big challenges uh, that, that sort of gave you the incentive to do the research. Yeah, I mean, I wanted to write an adventure song, like I like I said in the intro to that song, and um, and I just felt like there weren't enough adventure songs about women, or maybe there's aren't any. I mean, that's a bold claim. There probably are some, but um, I I don't know any, so. Um, that was my starting point. And then I wanted it to be like a polar adventure of some kind um, because I was inspired by the Stan Rogers song. And um, so I just started looking around. Right, where are some women who've done some amazing polar adventures? And, and I came across these these two women, um, Liv Arneson and uh, Anne Bancroft. And I was just pretty blown away by this experience that they had and their bravery and they had incredible difficulty getting funding to do what they wanted to do because people were like you can't do this you couple couple girls you know they they don't you know this is really dangerous like oh no we didn't know that thank you for for <laughs> filling us in <laughs> um and in any case they um I was just very moved by the whole story and I ended up doing a, a lot of reading both um, from these women and other accounts of the journey and also just like tons of research about Antarctica in general um, and uh, it just is a very it's a very fascinating topic um, with a with an interesting history. Um, and the song just kind of like assembled itself out of everything that I had read and, and also watching the women talk about it. Um, and, the, and the phrase push the dream actually comes from, from listening to one of them speak about why they love to be uh, in these Arctic, you know, polar places that a lot of people think are so empty and so desolate. But she was talking about how, as I remember it, you know, when there's nothing on the landscape to stop you and it's just this wide open sky and this wide open space and day after day of moving through it, these thoughts and dreams can kind of just like start to coalesce and start to just kind of gain momentum and there's nothing to interrupt it. There's nothing to stop that. And she had this image of like having a dream and sort of pushing it across this icy landscape and it would sort of build and build and I just thought that that was beautiful and cool so that that you know formed the kind of the, the cornerstone of the song this phrase push the dream um, 
Yeah. So you you wanted to capture some of that in in your song. I did, and I I wanted to capture you know the the flavor of like the experience that they had and Mm -hmm. what was maybe different in their experience than in previous Antarctic expeditions where there was maybe a bit more testosterone and a bit more competitive, you know, things going on. Um, and that, you know, these women really did it for love, for their love of these landscapes and these experiences and, and with a spirit of, of teamwork and um, appreciating the beauty uh, and the mystery and the weirdness <laughs> of those places. Um, yeah. So hopefully I, 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 they haven't heard it, so I can't say if they would feel like I captured it, but <laughs> it was fun for me. Well, that's something to look forward to. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then you <clears throat> make my life a song. Um, you describe it as, as a prayer, although you weren't directing the prayer to any specific entity. Yeah. Um, so making your life a song what what does that involve (laughs) what does that involve um you know i think what what i was thinking when i wrote that was that you know i think all of us or most of us resonate with the idea of having a life of meaning and um there's something for me in the image of make my life a song that sort of says like it it's going somewhere you know it has a beginning and a middle and an end and a coherency to it and a story to it and a meaning to it and you know when you hear a song that you love it it lights up your heart and so there's something about wanting to have a life that lights people up on some level the way a song can do that so I guess that's, I guess that's what it means. I didn't really think too much about what it meant. It just felt good mm-hmm. <laughs> to say. <laughs> Have you written other songs, similar themes or related themes? Um, well, it's funny because I, I have three songs that all have this kind of reference to song in a way, like even that the last song that I did with the singing bowl, this is the melody that holds me. Like that's kind of, to me, that's definitely related. And then I have another song called Singing My Way Home. Um, So they're all kind of like playing around this idea of song and how it's almost like we have a song, you know, like each person has a song, like a nature or a spirit that is sort of shaping shaping their lives and shaping who they are and what they resonate with. So um, I take, seem to keep coming back to that image. And home is another theme that you, you tend to focus on on occasion. Um, is that because you moved around a lot or <laughs> are there other reasons? <laughs> I, I think there's something to that. I definitely have moved a decent bit through the course of my life. And I, and I think I'm not someone who's felt really like a clear sense of home. Um, so maybe there's a longing there to feel home. Um, that's probably true. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't think I have a lot more to say about that, but, but yeah, I like the idea of home and, and I, and I think I'm searching for that in my life on some level. And do you think it resonates with a listener that, that they too would say, oh, oh, I get that. You want to find a home or define a phone, a home or get a sense of what home is? I think there is a lot of people who would resonate with. I'm sure there's probably other people who don't care. <laughs> but but I I mean I I feel like I see a lot of people who are don't feel a sense of home. Um and I think we have a kind of a placeless culture, you know, a sort of mobile culture where one place 
is sort of exchangeable for another on some level. And there's something about that and a homeless feeling that to me kind of go together. So I am imagining that other people probably, some other people resonate. I don't know. You're a listener. Did you resonate? <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> There you go. Absolutely. Sample size of one. <laughs> <laughs> the scientist comes out. Yeah. Um, and then you had your <clears throat> your love song. You say this is the only love song you've written. No, okay. I wouldn't say that. There's just it's just not like a big theme for me. And yeah. I think there's you know love songs. I don't know if anybody's studied it, but I'm guessing they they're probably a very large portion of the songs that are out there in the world. Yeah. Um, and that might be why I don't write that many of them, because I feel like that genre is covered. I don't know <laughs> if I have anything to add to that. Um, but yeah, I don't I don't have a lot of love songs, but I have a few. Mm -hmm. And that's one of them. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, it, it struck me as kind of a, a variant, a very interesting variant on the average. It's not codependence. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you're, you're not ready to end it all because your your friend is no longer around or anything. Um, <laughs> but it's also, but you know, there's it's not like it's cold either. It's is, is there anything that did comes to mind uh, having you know in your songwriting experience or you know knowing other songwriters or song listeners? Has anything else come to your mind that is worth adding to our conversation? Um, you know, I guess I would say don't, if you're someone who wants to write a song and you have a story in your mind that you can't or you wouldn't be good at it, I would just urge people to challenge that a little bit, mm -hmm. um, not buy into that. And, um, and just remember there's a lot of ways to write a song you can have a certain story or topic that you want to write about you can have a little piece of a melody that just floats in and you go what the heck was that and what can I make out of that or you can just have a feeling and it's so strong and you can say well how how could I make a song that had that feeling and there's just a lot there's as many ways to write a song as there are different types of people and different types of creativity so yeah <laughs> yes, that's what I'd say. Yeah. If you want to write a song, give it a try. <laughs> yeah. I have a hunch you, you, you uh, experience earworms from time to time. Is that correct? You mean where I just get something in my head and I can't yeah, get it melody, out? Or... Whether it's your own creation or someone else's, it's, it's, oh, sure. it's going. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a victim as well. But... <laughs> But sometimes it works, you know, sometimes it, it's beneficial. Oh, yeah, definitely. So on, on the Appalachian Trail, that was kind of what was going on there, melody and, and feeling? Um, you know, I, I was quite young at the time. I was in my early 20s, and I had just was feeling heartbroken at the time by something, a relationship that had ended shortly before that trip. And, and I'd been wanting to write a song for a really long time and never could make anything that seemed worthwhile. And just day after day of walking in silence and in the forest, and I can't really explain how it happened, but I knew I wanted to say something about this heartbroken feeling that I had and tell that story. And, um, yeah, it's just something, the rhythm of walking, just the rhythm of it, day after day, and so much space, and so much silence, and um, it just started to, like, assemble itself, the story, just, and I don't remember it being just like a melody, and then words, or it just kind of, <laughs> step after step it just started falling into place and then I had a song that I actually felt good about it actually said what I wanted to say and it didn't just feel like a cheesy you know copy of someone else trying to say something it felt mm -hmm. like me saying it and mm -hmm. uh and yeah and it was satisfying and then I was just totally hooked on the idea of writing songs at, at that point <laughs> how, what's an estimate of how many songs you've written um, 
I don't know. That's a good question. I've never actually counted them. I'm not super prolific. Um, I'd say maybe like 25 or 30 songs. Mm -hmm. And not all of them ones I would want to share publicly. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. okay. Well, thanks, Claire. That's very helpful. Great, great comments. Great insights. You're welcome. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks for watching our show. I'd like to acknowledge the support of the Western Mass Songwriters Collaborative, promoting the original music scene in Western Massachusetts. If you want to learn more about the Collaborative, go to their Facebook page. Thanks for watching. I'm Dr. Dan. I hope you'll tune in again for the show that puts a spotlight on songwriters.